Welcome to the first steps and uh, to the first course of our uh, old Nali Fantasy Tree project. Um, today we'll use Xrock 4.2 to create the basic branching structure of our tree. So let's click the branch icon. I immediately will rename it to stem. And then I'll work on the splines uh, that uh, create the shape of the stem object. So left click the circle and increase the radius. I think 100 units should be okay. Yeah, so that the stem uh, gets thicker. Um, and I'm also reducing the angle so that we uh, produce less polygons. We can increase the level of detail later on if we need to, but for now I'll go with this uh, low resolution. Then activate the path spline. Perhaps it's a good idea to um, switch into the lines mode or wireframe mode. And also activate the point mode. You see that the, the basic spline, the path spline is made up out of uh, three control points and uh, several um, well, intermediate points. And now we'll um, um, yeah, move those points around so that we get a more uh, gnarly shape for our uh, stem. So simply activate a point, go into the move mode and simply move the points around until you are satisfied with the shape. Um, I personally um, often add additional points so that the stem um, well grows straight out of the floor like this back into the guru mode yeah we could use some more points or even move them around a little bit more Let's take this one I think this is okay as the basic shape. Then add a deviation object to the scene and drag it into the path spline and you'll notice how the um, tree starts to well change its growth direction. Um, so this is a good tool to create a more gnarly look. And finally we'll work a little bit on the thickness. Of course you can fine-tune these parameters uh, also later on if you want to. It's absolutely no problem. Okay, so I think this uh, will be the basic shape of our uh, stem. Then add another branch object to the scene and drag it into the third position of the hierarchy. Don't forget to reduce the um, not, uh, angle or increase the angle so that you get less polygons. Um, I also increased the radius a little bit um, and I reduced the number of intermediate points. Um, then you can work a little bit on the thickness parameter just as you like. Okay. And now I know that most people go with the default settings of the node growth parameter because the length of the branches already look okay but I personally prefer to um, well go with node growth settings around 100 percent so if you right click control points and choose set you can set it to default values and also the rightmost control point which controls the growth in the upper area of the tree um, I'm setting to about 40 percent and this is the reason why I do this um, if all of the tree and branch components use those uh, very low values of node growth um, then soon uh, at a little bit higher levels of branching uh, nothing um, is growing uh, so you have to increase the number of branches to sometimes really ridiculous high values and I personally prefer 
to go with node growth uh, values at around 100% to about 50% because then I really uh, well can imagine what happens later on. But now of course um, the branches are uh, way too long so activate <coughs> the branch and then well go into the scale mode and reduce um, the scale of the branches so that length fits better to the tree I think this looks okay perhaps even a little bit shorter okay so here we go then I'll fine-tune um, the thickness take a more uh, detailed look yes I think this is okay and now we can use another branch deviation object inside the path spline of the branch so that the branches also start uh, to get a little bit uh, gnarly and twisted and then we also can use uh, a trapism object again drag it into the uh, path spline um, I'm using um, a tropism that works upwards at the base area of the, um, the branch and then a tropism that works downwards in the outer areas so that the branch shapes uh, looks about this yeah I think this is okay perhaps even a little bit stronger in the areas out at the end of the branch at the tip of the branch I think this is a nice basic shape of our tree perhaps you already noticed that um, the branches look pretty similar um, this comes um, well of the way branch deviation works um, uh, it changes the direction of growth at every child node and because this is almost the same on, on every branch um, those growth direction changes are also the same um, later on when fine-tuning density and growth parameters this gets less obvious but there's also a other way to get around this problem add a curvature spline to the scene then drag the deviation and tropism object into this curvature spline and delete the path spline of the branch object use the curvature spline as new path spline so it looks almost the same of course we have to um, work on the length of the branches again so go for translation Y left click the first control point and enter about 900 units for the first and uh, 900 units for the right control point this also was the length that we had before with our regular um, spline so until uh, now it looks almost the same again and now we'll make use um, of the noise function inside the rotation parameters so open the details of rotation X go for the function field and enter something like this so here you can see the noise function inside the brackets you will notice U use some sort of gradient you also could use a start value of 0 and uh, end value of uh, 1 or 100 um, percent but then of course uh, you couldn't use the uh, curve to control uh, or really control the strength of the noise so therefore U is a little helpful um, uh, yeah, function then um, you'll notice I which stands for iteration each branch receives an iteration number the first one gets iteration number 0 then we get number 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and um, 
Yeah, so that the noise doesn't get uh, zero uh, with the first branch. This would be um, uh, iteration number zero. So you would get a value of zero inside right here. I'm adding 100 on top. You could also use other values. This is really up to you. And then outside the brackets, I'm multiplying this with, uh, with x. x, um, well, represents the curve. So now we can control the noise, the strength of the noise, noise with the control curve. So simply um, drag the control points upwards and you'll notice how the branches will start to, well, twiggle around. You can use perhaps higher values inside here to get a higher frequency. So I'm multiplying this with, let's say, 125. So because of the higher frequency, we also get more different, well, appearance of the branches. And now you also could add more control points if you want to and say uh, define areas with high noise, uh, areas with low noise. This is really up to you. But what you can see is that every branch really looks different right now. So finally I'll rename the branch to branch 1 because later on we will add some more branching levels. Uh, for now I'm uh, uh, pretty happy with the result of the basic uh, structure of our tree. The stem is pretty gnarly and also the branches look different and are twiggling around. Uh, so with the next step we'll add uh, more branching levels um, to our gnarly tree.